Sophia. I'm so grateful to be teaching you guys yoga here today. Uh, this is your intermediate practice. So today I'm gonna take you through sun salutation A and B. We'll also work towards an arm balance and strengthening your shoulders. So when you're ready, come to the top of your mat. Look down at your feet and make sure that they're parallel. You can either have your toes together touching or your feet hip width distance apart. Lift your inner arches and hug your outer ankles in. As you inhale, draw energy up from the earth and raise your shoulders up to your ears. As you exhale through your nose, reach beyond your fingertips as you draw your shoulder blades down your back. Inhale, energy rises with the arms and the breath. Exhale, hands down through center, Sama CTE, standing in steadiness. Inhale, reach the arms up. And as you exhale, folding forward, hands can come to frame out your feet at the bottom of your exhale, or if they can't reach, just taking them to the shins. In your forward fold, this is the yin variation of the forward fold. So it's coinciding with an exhale. As you inhale, this is the yang variation. So this is heat generating and strength building. The exhale is the flexibility, the surrender. One more time, inhale your halfway lift. Make sure you're sewing the upper ribs together and lengthening the back of the neck and exhale to fold to Uttanasana. Ground down into your palms and step your right leg back to a lunge. Here in your lunge, you always wanna make sure that your knee is stacked directly over your heel. Push the floor away, slide the shoulder blades down the back and as soundlessly as possible, squeeze your left heel to your bum. Then step it back to plank. For the first one, we'll lower down our knees in plank. And if you have a straight diagonal line from your knee to your shoulder, it's harder. If you send your bum back, it's easier. Going to lower down through Chaturanga. As you exhale, make sure your upper arm bones are parallel to the ground. Then all the way down onto your belly. Inhale to rise to baby cobra. Exhale, third eye to the mat. Inhale to cobra. Ground down into your palms, tuck your toes. Push into the heel of your palm and your knees to send the pelvis back to downward facing dog on an exhale breath. In your downward facing dog, you wanna have your hips, uh, your feet hip width distance apart and you're trying to imagine your heels touching the ground or if they do, imagine sending them through the earth. Don't dump into the lower back. Make sure you're sewing the ribs together and rotating the triceps out and around, pushing the floor away. Imagine there's a sling lifting your pelvis up and back. Take a deep inhale for four. And out for six. Ground down into your left leg and inhale your right leg to the sky. Here we wanna keep the hips nice and square. So you wanna have a straight diagonal line from your wrist crease all the way up to your heel. Then as you exhale, tiger curl your knee to your nose, dome your upper back, look forward and step your right leg forward to a lunge. Again, you want to have the joints stacked from the ground up here. Look forward and step the left leg forward. As you inhale, take a halfway lift. And as you exhale, fold belly to thighs. Ground down into the heels as you rise all the way up to stand. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, Sama Siti. And we begin again. Inhale, reach up, look up. 
And as you exhale, cascading forward, soften the knees if you need to. Try to keep the pelvis over the heels. As you inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, you're halfway lift with a flat spine. Exhale to fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. And this time, step your left leg back to your lunge. Push the floor away, so you're trying to have your shoulder blades draw down the outer ribs. And as soundlessly as possible, squeeze your right heel to your bum. Send your right leg back to plank. Know that you can lower the knees like you did last time, or this time will stay in plank. Shift your shoulders forward over your fingertips. Push the floor away and lower down to Chaturanga. This is your landing pose in most of yoga. If you are struggling to build strength, you can also use your blocks here. So just setting up your block directly underneath your pelvic bones if you've got the block. If you don't, no worries, just leave your knees on the ground. Coming into the block variation, you'll tuck your toes and head to plank. In yoga, in plank, it's called Dandasana in yoga. You don't want to have your pelvis too high. It's very different than down dog. It wants to be lower than your shoulder girdle and you want to press out of your shoulder girdle like you're doing a scapular push-up so that the spine is elevated above the scapula, above the shoulder blades. Then you'll shift your shoulders forward over your fingertips, push the floor away as you lower down until your upper arm bones are parallel to the earth. Here, just rest on the block. So take a moment to ensure here that the joints are stacked from the ground up. So you want your elbow to be directly above your wrist. Otherwise, the weight of your body is being refracted. It's not going directly down. So it's actually making things more difficult for you. You'll push into the heel of your palm and push into your toes and lift just your pelvis, not your butt, a centimeter off the block. Just to pattern chaturanga. Lift it off again, then lower down the knees and get rid of your block. So now we're going to do it without the block. Tuck the toes, finding your way back to plank. Inhale, shift the shoulders forward and exhale, lowering down through chaturanga. Try to lower chest, ribs, belly all in one go. Inhale to cobra, baby cobra. Again, my heels of my palms are under my elbows. Exhale, third eye to the mat. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale to lower. Take your fingertips out nice and wide off your mat. We'll come into dancing cobra just to warm up the spine and the shoulders. And make sure that you're using your spinning erector muscles of your spine and your core to lift up. It's not a push up, so we're not using the bicep strength to rise. Inhale to lift. Exhale, roll the left shoulder, left cheek to the earth. Inhale to lift. Exhale, roll the right shoulder, right cheek to the earth. Inhale to lift. Exhale, left shoulder, left cheek. Inhale to lift. Exhale, right shoulder, right cheek. Come back to center and take the palms, reach them to the back of the mat. Tuck both toes under. Pull up the kneecaps so that the knees and the quadriceps are off the mat. Push into the palms and begin to rise to Shalabhasana. Here you can then point the toes and have the legs floating. Start to reach the fingertips to the back of the mat. So you're generating heat in your spine Heart is reaching forward, neck is nice and long. Then you'll plant the palms and press back, pushing into the knees, tuck the toes and travel back to downward facing dog. 
deep breath in for four and out for six. Ground down into your right leg and at the speed of your breath, inhale your left leg to the sky. Keep the hips nice and square. This will give you a deeper stretch in your IT band, your outer hamstring. As you exhale, knee to nose, dome the upper back, look forward, step the left leg forward to a lunge. Then step your right leg forward, inhale, take a halfway lift, and exhale to fold, or tanasana. Ground down into the heels as you rise all the way up to stand on your inhale. Exhale, Sama Sitti. Inhale, reach up, look up. And as you exhale, diving forward, belly to thighs. Inhale to take your halfway lift with a flat spine. Plant the palms and step your right leg back to a lunge. Then step your left leg back to plank. Inhale, shift the shoulders forward over the fingertips. And as you exhale, lowering down through Chaturanga all the way onto your bellies. Inhale to baby cobra. Exhale to lower. Here, you can always stay with baby cobra as your transition, traveling back to downward facing dog by tucking the toes and going back through the knees to your downward facing dog. Otherwise, if you'd like to learn the progression, it's upward facing dog, or going a little bit higher into your cobra, pressing into the heel of the palm, and push up so you straighten the arms. Here, you don't wanna overextend the arms. If you have that capability, you want the arms to be aesthetically straight, not what feels like straight. The triceps, again, are rotating out and around. My quadriceps and knees are off the ground and the core is engaged. The shoulder blades are pushing into the back of the heart and the collarbones are aiming to be in front of the shoulder heads. As you exhale here, imagine a sling is under your pelvis, lifting it up and back. Then you can step over the toes one at a time or roll over the toes both at once. Take a deep inhale for four and out for six. In through the nose for four out for six. Now we're going to do the straight leg walk forward. If that doesn't work for you, you can always just walk forward the same as you did last time, stepping to a lunge or just walking forward with bent feet. Otherwise, look forward going on your tippy toes and try to just take baby steps, walking your feet to your hands at the top of your mat. When you get there, inhale to take a halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale to rise all the way up to stand. And exhale, Sama Sitti. So that concludes Sun Salutation A. We'll begin Sun Sal B. The first pose of this is Utkatasana Chair Pose. Graze the earth with your fingertips as you inhale, sinking your pelvis down in line with your knees. Try to send your knees back over your heels, sew your upper ribs together, and try to have your upper arm bones by your ears, keeping your shoulder blades down. Exhale to fold, Uttanasana. Inhale to take your halfway lift, flatten the spine, plant the palms, and step back to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Here you can lower down if you need to, or you can go directly to upward facing dog if you are ready. And exhale back to downward facing dog. 
In Ashtanga, they pull the knee directly in. There are a few different ways we can do the step forward here. In Vinyasa, you'll often hear raise the leg, open the hip and bend the knee. It depends what the class is prepping for. So if you are prepping for an inversion class, you will actually rarely hear open the hip and bend the knee because when you're inverted to re-square off the hips, it can throw you off balance. If you're in a back bend class, you will have the open hip bend knee option because it will open your solace more and it's also somewhat of a back bend. You don't want to dump into your right shoulder here. Then as you exhale, take your knee to your nose, dome your upper back, look forward, step the left leg forward to a lunge. Here, your blocks can be useful once again to bring the ground a little closer to you. You can use them to frame out your front foot. If you don't have blocks, no worries, just tent your fingertips and put your hands on the ground or you can reach the ground if that works for you as well. Set your back heel down at 45 degrees. We're setting up for a pose called Warrior One. If you look at the inseam of your front leg, it wants to be at 90 degrees. Then you wanna take your left hand and tug your left hip crease back. So the pelvic bones are aiming to rotate towards the front of the mat, but they actually won't. So your torso will. Then you'll reach your right arm forward and inhale to rise all the way up to warrior one. So here my front thigh bone is at about 12 o'clock and the pelvic bones will naturally come to about five and 10 past, but the ribs are trying to rotate and square off to the front of the mat. Your back heel is down. Sink deeper and reach higher beyond the fingertips. Then as you exhale, open the arms, lift the back heel, travel back the way you came, framing out your front foot with your fingertips. Squeeze your left heel to your bum and then send it back to plank. Inhale, shift the shoulders forward. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra if you need the more restful variation. And exhale back to your downward facing dog. Deep inhale for four and out for six. Ground down into your left leg at the speed of your breath. Take your right leg to the sky. So here would be the pelvis square option because we did it on the other side. You can open the hip, send it a little higher. This targets more into your adductors of your inner thigh. From the waist to the wrist is still in down dog. As we open the hip, there's a tendency to dump into that left shoulder. Make sure you don't do that. Try to find length in your left frontal hip. Then bend your right knee. Exhale, knee to nose, dome the upper back. Push the floor away here. So as you go to step this right foot through, there's a tendency for people to just take it through and think forward. And then your shin is gonna hit the ground. So you actually have to really try to get your thigh bone to push your torso up to the sky so that you have the space to get your right foot through. Coming onto fingertips or blocks, set your back heel down at 45 degrees and just doing a self assist here. Use your right thumb to pull your right hip crease back so that your bum doesn't swing out to the side. Then reach your left arm forward, ground down into the heels. Imagine you're stretching your mat apart here for stability. Then inhale, reach your arms up for warrior one, sinking deeply into that front knee. If you're having any struggles balancing, pressing your tongue onto the roof of your mouth always helps to um, engage your balance. 
Then as you exhale, open the arms, lift the back heel, traveling back the way you came. Hands frame out the front foot in a lunge. Push the floor away and squeeze your right heel to your bum. Then send it back to plank. Inhale, shift the shoulders forward over the fingertips. Exhale to lower to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And as you exhale, travel back to a seat on your heels. For child's pose, your resting pose. Deep inhale through the nose for four. And out for six through the nose. In for four. Out for six. Start to roll up to a seat on your heels. This pose is called Virasana Hero Pose. Then line your fingertips up with your knees. I'm going to show you our base for Crow Pose, which is our arm balance. Because we're gonna be balancing on our arms, our hands will become our base, they'll become our feet. So we need to make sure that our foundations are nice and sturdy. Chaturanga is the base for the arm balance. So I'm gonna get you to just pattern chaturanga into your body once again without the legs as a focus. So just make sure your elbows are stacked right above the heel of your palm. Shift your shoulders forward over your fingertips and then start to bend until your upper arm bones are parallel to the earth. Imagine you're gonna pick yourself up but you're not. Just really push into the ground here until you feel your biceps and triceps really grip and the front of the shoulders. So this is what's gonna be happening when you're on the ground. And just walk your hands forward. Inhale to rise to all fours and as you exhale, travel back to downward facing dog. You can either walk to the front of your mat like you did last time, or if you would like to learn to float, it's a nice, fun transition. So just like Utkatasana chair pose, compact your belly to your thighs. Now inhale, look between your thumbs and your fingertips. And as you exhale, almost like chair pose on your tippy toes, send your bum back, compress the belly to thighs. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, compress. This time as you inhale and look forward, don't exhale, but do compress. Let the exhale float you forward to the front of your mat. Then inhale to rise to Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale to fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. Then sprinkle your fingertips and heel toe your feet apart, melting down into a squat called Malasana. From front on, this pose will look like this. So you're just in a squat. As you inhale, draw the shoulder blades down the back, lift the gaze. And as you exhale, bow your third eye to your fingertips. We're going to make our way down onto our back. If there's a big gap between your bum and the floor, just use your hands to gently lower down. If there's no or very little gap, you can reach forward, make your back like a capital C and start to curl down onto your back. Have a few rocks up and down through the spine. And then find yourself in a seat with your toes touching and your knees wide in Baddha Konasana. Point your toes and keep this position of the feet. Reach forward and again start to roll down onto your back. Keep the framework of your legs, just elevate the toes to the sky. Keep sending the knees forward to the top of your mat and just curl your tailbone off the ground for five, four, three, two, one. Take your fingertips to the base of your skull and it's a two part inhale, one part exhale to release. So inhale, inhale, exhale, release. Inhale, reach the shoulder blades off, 
Second half of the inhale, knees to triceps. Exhale, release. Just three more like that. Inhale, curl shoulder blades off. Second half of the inhale, knees to triceps. Exhale, release. And last one. Inhale, shoulder blades off. Knees to triceps. And then give your knees a little squeeze towards your armpits. Setting up once again, put your elbows inside your knees and imagine that you're pushing the sky away. Find chaturanga with your arms here. There's no weight on them, but it's still that same shape that we created. Point your toes and push your elbows into your knees and your knees into your elbows. Make sure that the elbows don't go too wide here. So your elbows are wanting to be the same distance as your shoulders and your wrists. Now separate your feet and reach your hands through your heels. If your feet come together, you won't be able to get back up to that squat. So use your arms like a marker or a guide. Curl your tailbone off for two. And then this time use that momentum to roll back to a squat. And if you don't get it the first time, that's okay. Just use your hands. Push into your palms and send your hips high and your heels back for a forward fold. Just have a little rest. Now, if you don't want to do an arm balance, if you have some sort of injury or you're a little afraid, you can just wait in Malasana, your squat that we've done. Otherwise, if you would like to play with the arm balance, imagine that you're hugging a block with your elbows so that the elbows squeeze in together here. If the elbows go too far out to the side, you will not have a platform to rest on. So I'll demonstrate the pose to you and then what will happen if you do it wrong so that you don't have to experience um, falling from doing it wrong. Take your feet to be like a diamond at a 90 degree angle with your hands on the ground, shoulder width distance apart. Go on your tippy toes. I'm going to teach you a modification here. Traditionally, the knees would go on the back of the elbows. It's a little bit harder. So we'll take the knees to the outer elbows like we did when we were on our back. Now the elbows have to be over the wrist. And the scary part is to then shift your shoulders forward. You could just stay here, squeezing the knees into the elbows. You could point one toe to the bum and then the other, or maybe both. Look forward, don't look underneath you. Spread your fingers and grip through your fingertips. If your elbows go too far out to the side, this pose will not work. You will pancake towards the ground. So you need to have your elbows shoulder width distance apart and that way the shoulders go forward. So you'll be able to see here as I'm facing you that if I let my elbows go out, it's a pancake, so you just don't wanna do that, okay? After you've had a little play, take the feet back to parallel and place one palm under the foot and then the other. For Padasasthasana, just give your hands a little massage, relax the neck, rocking the head from side to side. This pose is called Padasasthasana. Very cooling and calming on your central nervous system. Then release your palms one by one. Heel toe your feet back together and inhale to Utkatasana chair pose. Start to lower down to a toe sit. You can always do that with your hands on the ground if you're a little bit um, scared of your balance. Then plant your upper arm bones inside your knees. Your big toe mounds need to be touching, pressed together here. Send your knees back and start to walk your hands forward, relaxing your forehead towards the ground. Feel for the stretch in your adductors of your inner thighs and your lower back. You can wiggle the knees from side to side. Make sure the inner feet are glued together here touching. Then just start to walk your hands close towards your body and back behind you. 
out, stretch the legs. Then draw the sole of your right foot in to your inner thigh. Inhale your arms up and as you exhale, forward fold. Here you can again take your hand like you're going to shut a door and grab the outer wrist to deepen the pose, otherwise just reaching for the toes or the shin is fine as well. Then inhale to rise and straighten your right leg forward. Bend your left leg, let the knee go out to the side and coming into your forward fold on the other side. If you grabbed the wrist, do that same variation if possible. Otherwise, piece fingers around the big toe or simply melting down towards the leg. to Dandasana, push into the earth, then inhale, reach the arms up, and as you exhale, forward fold. Keep reaching for the toes, then slowly start to roll down onto your backs, bone by bone. Press your palms into the earth by your hip bones and start to draw your knees in toward your chest. Like we did in the core work, start to curl your tailbone off the ground. And then begin to reach your legs over your head to the back of your mat, pushing into your palms. From there, you can support your lower back. This pose is called plow pose. The knees can be bent if the hamstrings don't provide the length for this either staying in plow or reaching one leg to the sky trying to keep your pelvis stacked over your shoulders and your heel over your pelvis and then the other leg so the inversions are a great way to stimulate your pineal gland calm your central nervous system heal your body Drain all the freshly oxygenated blood from your legs and your organs to flush your brain. Then you'll slowly drip your toes back over your head the way that they came. Release your lower back and start to lower down bone by bone. Coming in to your Shavasana, your final resting pose. Take the palms face up to receive, draw the shoulder blades down the back and transfer the weight of your body to the ground. Just take a few moments of rest here, stilling the mind. And start to wriggle your fingers and toes Reach the arms above the head and point your toes, making yourself as long as you can. Start to roll onto your favorite side using your arm as a pillow. Support yourself as you make your way slowly up into your version of a comfortable seat. This can be cross-legged or seated on your heels. Thank you so much for taking the time to practice with me today. I'll see you at the next one.